Welcome to the Wellness for Women show, where we talk about life, weight loss and everything in between. I'm Faye Caseman, founder of the AAA Way Life and Weight Loss Programme, and I'm here to help you put together the pieces of life and weight loss for one last time. This is an episode of the Wellness for Women show, filmed live in the free Facebook group. Hello, 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 and welcome to episode number 78. And today's episode is all about sharing some winter, well, autumn and winter wellness secrets. And today I want to share with you some tips and tricks for your holistic well-being for the changing seasons. And so if you are starting to feel your mood slipping and feeling a little bit of a shift in perspective, as you said, goodbye to the lighter days, the beaches and suntans and cool creamy pina coladas, then this episode is for you. And as usual, the tips I'll share today not only help your life and weight loss, but also overall well-being. And so what does autumn bring for you? Leave me a note in the comments. Are you excited for cozy jumpers and pumpkin spiced drinks and food? Do you love crunching through rustling leaves in the crisp air, perhaps out on a family walk? In which case, still listen on because there is something in this show for everyone. Or maybe more like me and a lot of people that I know who start to get a little bit down in the dumps as the darker days and cold mornings start to set in. Maybe you're feeling the pinch of the cost of living and worried about your energy bills this coming uh, autumn and winter or the upcoming holiday expenses. Whatever your concerns may be, I want to know that I want you to know that there are simple steps you can take to make this autumn season a little bit brighter. And so coming up, I'm going to tell you a story that will help you to uncover some beliefs that might be impacting your well-being during autumn. I'll also, of course, as usual, talk about how you can step into action for your well-being and to be accountable, which is, of course, the AAA way, which is awareness, action and accountability, which is my method. And if you want some practical tips to help you maintain your energy, boost your mood, make food choices that align with your unique well-being journey this autumn, then be sure to check out the membership link in the description as this week's complimentary resource is 10 tips for autumn wellness. So have you got yourself a nice little warm cup of tea, coffee, hot chocolate? Are you comfy? And then let's begin. So understanding your seasonal changes. So first up, let's have a little look at how these seasons, the change in season actually impacts you. So what do you know already? So common struggles at this time of year can be feeling more tired and lethargic due to shorter daylight hours, cravings for comfort food or un unhealthier snacks, difficulty staying motivated and active during the colder weather, increased stress and pressure around holiday season events and expectations or maybe you suffer from seasonal affective disorder so sad or the winter blues so who remembers my character jane from previous episodes this is jane if you're watching on one of the videos well i'm rolling her out again today with a story of a typical morning so during the autumn season jane finds a lot of life and diet drama comes up for her in the autumn time she misses warm summers, lighter mornings and time off work with the time off work and school with her family. She's back to doing the school runs, trying to encourage the kids to behave and is back rushing around like a blue ass fly in the mornings to get herself and the kids ready so she can get to work. Ugh, work, of course. Work is manic for her as well. It feels like no matter where she turns, home or work, there is a world of trouble waiting for her. And it starts as soon as the alarm goes off. So she's finding the new dark mornings a struggle. She doesn't want to get out of bed and she feels miserable. The room is dark and cold and she's, and she's refusing to put the heating on yet. And she doesn't want to go to work. And if Jane had her way, she would just hibernate until summer comes back. But no, she's got to get up and get some shit done. So every morning as her alarm goes off, she curses and mentally rants about how it's not fair and how she wishes she didn't have to go to work. And she wrangles with herself, tempted to hit the snooze button just 10 more minutes because she knows that she just needs that extra 10 minutes in bed. But she also knows that it will put her behind. But she just can't face the day yet. And the alarm goes off again. <sighs> of course it does. How is it possible that she managed to fall so heavily back to sleep in 10 minutes and that she now feels like she's been run over by a bus? 
And what was that crazy ass dream that she just had about being in an important meeting naked? So stealing herself to brave the cold, Jane says farewell to her bed for the day. But she says, well, at least she can go to Starby's on the way to work and get that latest um, latest special drink. The pumpkin spice lattes may have gone off the menu, boo, but eggnog lattes are in and will do the trick as long as she's getting that caffeine hit. So then she's in the shower and she starts to wonder, how is it nearly bloody Christmas? She hasn't even started her shopping. She's really pissed at herself that she's behind this year, especially after she read on Susie, another mum at school's Facebook, that she had completed all her shopping. Well, whoop de doo for the perfect Susie. So then she gets out the shower and she can hear the kids screaming at each other. Joy of joys. She looks at her husband, sound asleep, simultaneously wondering how he can sleep through and also cursing about how he never does anything as the kids start screaming again. Wet hair, towel round her, she goes to investigate, trying not to cry. But God, she's bloody cold and she wishes that she could put that heating on. And finally, she sorts the kids out and then starts to calm them down a little bit. But yet, Little Johnny still wasn't dressed for school, even though she'd shouted at him three times to get dressed. And little Josie was supposed to be eating a breakfast, but actually she was playing Barbie. And as she walks back to her bedroom, she steps in something. Cat sick. It looks like Felix is bathed up in the night. Bloody brilliant. So she thinks to herself, how the day is a disaster already, as predicted. How she knew she shouldn't have got out of bed. And if it wasn't so dark and cold, she would have been fine. She was nowhere near ready for work. Her husband was still sleeping and she still needed to get ready for work. And she starts to think that maybe she'll grab that caramel waffle muffin at Starby's too. And she likes to try new seasonal food and she sure as hell deserves it after the morning she's had so far. Plus, crap of craps, she hasn't planned anything for lunch. So she's going to have to grab lunch on the go as well and then goodness knows what she's going to do for dinner probably some beige food from the freezer as she knows that she'll be even more frazzled later so this is jane's morning story so far how does that land with you there's certainly a fair few bits from jane's story that have happened to me over the years i can totally rate relate to her hectic morning routine the struggle to drag myself out of bed and get ready for the day is all too familiar and sadly, or maybe it's not a bad thing that isn't a Starbies near me, but I certainly welcome my morning cup of coffee and my morning cup of joe. I too also love trying new seasonal foods as they draw me in and I worry about get all the FOMO that they're only available for a certain limited time. But the good news is for good news is for Jane, she can work on her difficult mornings, her relationship with food, her kids, her husband, work and the dark and cold autumnal mornings. And it all starts with awareness. And if any of Jane's story resonates with you, firstly, I would say you're not alone. The next step is to just keep gathering that awareness. So let's talk a minute about beliefs. So do you have any beliefs about this time of year that could be impacting your life or your relationship with food? Let's take a little look at Jane's and what beliefs and subconscious programming are perhaps setting the tone for her, for everything, because ultimately they are what influence our thoughts, our emotions and our actions. So for Jane, her beliefs about seasonal food and the fear of missing out are impacting her relationship with food. But what other beliefs could she have at play? in her life during this time of the year. Well, perhaps Jane is holding the belief that she needs to do it all, be the perfect wife, the perfect mother, the perfect employee, even on those dark and cold autumn, autumn mornings when motivation is low. And this belief may be un, putting unnecessary pressure on her and it makes it difficult for her to prioritise self-care and nourishing herself properly. Additionally, Jane might have a belief that she... Um, that indulging in comfort foods during the fall season is a sign of weakness or a lack of discipline. And this could lead to her feeling guilt and shame whenever she gives in to a craving or enjoys a seasonal treat. Furthermore, Jane may have been conditioned by societal expectations that dictate what her body should look like during the summer versus the colder months. And so that pressure to maintain a certain physique year round can also create and create anxiety and negativity towards her own body. Jane may feel the need to constantly compare herself to these unrealistic beauty standards leading to a constant feeling of not being good enough and that can then further exacerbate her struggle with self-care during the fall season. 
And of course, then we've got the practicalities as well. Practically speaking, Jane's busy schedule and responsibilities may leave her with very little time or energy for herself. Between work, family obligations and social commitments, it becomes easy for Jane to neglect taking care of her own well-being. And the idea of carving out time for relaxation and self-care during this fall season may seem like an unattainable luxury for Jane. And she may find herself constantly on the go, rushing from one task to another, and just again, leaving no time for some personal rejuvenation. And the other thing about Jane is that she's also likely to have some subconscious programming at play from when she was little and she perhaps saw her mum go through the same patterns. She's heard stories about how women, a woman's work is never done. Maybe she was once told that she should always prioritise others, that self-care is self selfish and that she believes this, even though she says she doesn't. And she maybe has absorbed societal expectations of constantly needing to be productive and self-sacrificing. And ultimately, all of these beliefs are feeding into Jane's daily story and they need unpacking. And as the saying goes, what isn't changing, we are choosing. Harsh, as it may be at times, but also very, very true. And so if you feel any resistance to that phrase, it may be worth leaning into it and seeing where that comes from for you. But ultimately, all of these factors are what is causing Jane the life and food drama. As she goes about her day-to-day -day business, these are all playing out. Each city thought, risking being another gateway to a fuck it moment around food or other substances maybe like drink. And each tribulation is another possible nail in the coffin that means by the end of the day, again, she's frazzled. She's shouting at the kids, the husband, the cat, and wishing life was different. As she overeats her dinner and tries to numb out and then tops off the tank in front of the TV as she eats a big bag of Maltesers and afterwards the guilt and shame starts. She shouldn't have eaten. She shouldn't have eaten that. She shouldn't have overeaten a dinner. She's supposed to be mindfully eating for fuck's sake. She ruminates over how she didn't need those Maltesers and how eating chocolate is bad for her because it's full of calories and then starts the food blame. So even though the food was not the problem, she starts saying things like, I just can't keep that food in the house. It's my kryptonite. I knew I shouldn't have bought them. I just can't say no to them. Then her thoughts turn to her partner. God, I bet he thinks I'm such a bitch. He probably hates me. I shouldn't have shouted earlier. How can he love me when I shout and all I do is sit here and eat chocolate? Ouch, right? It's so easy to get into these spirals and these thought loops and each season can bring with it different challenges. It's easy to get caught up in those in that routine thinking, those old beliefs about gaining weight during this time of the year. But what if we challenge those beliefs? What if we can find opportunities in instead? An opportunity is a real buzzword for me at the moment. Um, I did a belief coding session on myself coupled with some EFT tapping about the dark, cold dark mornings and what came up for me was a memory of when I was little before I went to school. My mum had a market stall. They had to make ends meet. It was the um, they had to do what they had to do. It was the 80s. Mortgage prices were very high um, but I, the thing for me and little me was that I'd get woken up at ridiculous o'clock in the morning and let's face it, I was not a happy bunny, not a happy bunny at all. I hated going to the market. It was cold. It was boring. And often I was hungry. And I, and so I won't go into the process of the techniques. And, and But ultimately, I healed that moment through using these techniques that had been stuck basically since I was little and popped out a new set of beliefs. Um, and that belief that I've now got coded into me is that every day is an opportunity an opportunity to connect, an opportunity to serve, an opportunity to create, and an opportunity to grow. And couple this with my sad sunrise alarm clock that I've got, got the mornings so far have been far more easier. I'm on day four now, and the last two days I've even got out of bed humming and singing, if you can believe that, because that's pretty unprecedented. Now, of course, you might not have the tools like I do. So this is why I have the membership where I can teach and coach you on various techniques to use. I can work with you one to one for life coaching and belief coding. So be sure to check out this, the description, because when you become a member, like I said this week, you get um, top 10 tips for autumn wellness, which will help you to start unpick what's coming up for you um, right now and 
ultimately allow you to move forward with love and curiosity. So what about all this chatter then? What about all this chatter? So tell me in the chat, what did you notice about Jane's story? Did anything resonate with you? What came up for you? Um, because that in, that internal chatter that was going on and Jane's underlying beliefs, you know, they really sparked something. And I say, I'd like to know. And if it's something that you need help with, let me know. But what sparks for me is how exhausting all of this chatter can be and how complex our relationship with food can be, how she went from feeling like she deserved food in the morning, but then by the end of the day, she was demonizing it and blaming it. And I say it all the time, but food is not the problem. When we're de demonizing our food, blaming it for creating problems, it's easy to forget that eating food is actually in an, an action. And an action has to come from a feeling, that feeling has to come from a thought, and our thoughts are impacted by our beliefs. And so the real issue really is our relationship with food and how we perceive it. And it's more about why we eat. So in Jane's case, she'd had a shitty day, but the shitty day, again, is not to blame. It's her thoughts and feelings about the day. The more she stewed on it, the more emotions would have started rattling around. She was likely tired, overwhelmed, upset, frustrated and a whole host of other emotions, too. And those thoughts and emotions will get the better of us if we don't actively work on them and start to change those underlying beliefs, because we're just going to keep running the same stories all the time in our head. And these beliefs, like I say, especially if we don't work on them, again, they're just going to keep taking you round and round and round in the same circle. And I know certainly I had days like those before. It's very rare that I get them now. And if I do, I've got tools to work them through. And like I say, I'm still doing all this work. I have been doing a lot of work on my beliefs this week and my reasons for self-sabotaging and things that are coming up for me as well as these dark mornings because I continue to work on myself, I continue to grow, I continue to learn about what comes up daily. And so again, just to give you another example, just the other evening, I had an overeat. I knew that I was heading for finishing my plate because that's again a habit that I've had since I was little. We were all pretty much told to clean our plates. But I also knew, and I also knew as I was eating, I didn't really need the food, but I decided to eat it anyway. But I also decided to use it as an opportunity to mindfully explore why was I overeating? So was it a desire for the taste? Was I overwhelmed after a busy day at work, which is an, uh, another trigger for me? Was it a habit? Because like I say, for years I've cleaned my plate. Was I trying to numb out? Did I have a fear of not being able to have that particular meal again, even though that wasn't true because I could have it at any time? But none of these really rang true for me. So once more, I took a deeper dive this time again with belief coding in EFT, but it could have also been through journaling and reflection work as well. And what came up this time was the emotion of being frazzled. Um, not a, a phrase that I would typically say and not one that I would have associated with how I was feeling in that moment, but actually it did actually ring true. And again, this time it took me back to a memory of high school. So I was 14 years old. I just started because we operated a grammar si school system here um, back then, back in the day, um, where we used to change over and we'd go up to the, the next school at 14 for a couple of years and do our GCSEs. Um, so again, I turned up to this new school, it was new subjects, a bigger school, and so I was overwhelmed, I was tired, and I was frazzled after being at my new school, and I just wanted to numb out on food. But rather than food, I worked with this memory, and I guided young Faye to another source of comfort. And so clear as day, if you can picture this, I was back in my old, well, you won't be able to picture it because you've not been to my room, but basically I was sat in my old room trying to record music off the radio. So making mixtapes. And if you're of a certain age, you will 100% get that reference, trying to get and start it and stop it just at the right moment. But what I'll always say is that you always get three opportunities to change something before, during and after. And in this case, it was after. So I was reflecting on this feeling of frazzled after rushing about for the day. But now that I'm aware of this, I can then step into action next time. And now I have those new beliefs about how to handle that feeling of frazzled. And so I can approach that with love and curiosity in future meals. And now 
I imagine Jane was a little frazzled too after that busy day. So what could she have done differently in the lead up to that moment, the final finale and that bag of Maltesers and the shit spiral of thoughts that she was having? So again, tell me in the chat, what 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 do you picking out? What do you think Jane could have done in that to change her day? And obviously as a coach and mentor, I can see a number of different life areas that Jane could work on so that she wasn't perhaps feeling quite so frazzled at the end of the day leading to the bag of Maltesers that she wasn't hungry for, a number of action steps she could have taken to change the trajectory of her day as at the end of the day that life and weight loss does just go together because life and weight loss is just a series of decisions at the end of the day. So I could coach Jane through these easily as it's often a lot easier for somebody else to help you by holding up that mirror in front of you and talking through the issues. Jane, of course, could do some self-coaching. As a member of Wellness for Women, she can use the podcast, the techniques in the Food Freedom course or the latest show resource. She could reach out to the accountability group after a bad day. She could ask for support as she doesn't have to go it alone. One other thing that Jane could do is she could work on building a supportive autumn routine. So as these seasons change, it's worth evaluating what you were doing in those bright warm summers is that sustainable during the colder autumnal months same when it comes to winter and if you haven't before check out episode eight which was about winter wellness and routines they don't need to be rigid and set in stone and in actual fact i would advise caution if they were because at the end of the day you're not a robot i'm not a robot and any kind of routine or loving boundary that you set for yourself, it really needs to be a loving guide, something that's going to help you find balance. Um, because you're likely going to be already doing similar things day in, day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, and, and ultimately season by season. But we tend to forget what we did in the seasons because they were so long ago. But the question to ask yourself is, are they serving you? Are they serving your highest good right now? So some possible questions you could ask yourself would be what do you want to who do you want to be this season? How do you want to show up this season? Does my current routine serve my goals for this season? Is my current routine sustainable? What barriers are there to maintaining my routine? And at the end of the season, looking back, what do you want to be grateful for? And at the end of this season, when I look back, what do I want to have learned? And how can I find more joy in this season? And so as the nights draw in and it gets colder, maybe you want to incorporate activities such as warm baths with essential oils, cozying up with a good book, or maybe you want to even tackle a new hobby. Because each one of those, they could be helping you to create that sense of comfort that you're perhaps looking for this season. Maybe you want to wake up alarm clock like mine that starts to brighten your room. Maybe you want to shift some beliefs. Maybe you want to work on living a, a more intentional life this autumn where you get to create your ideal season. And weight loss ultimately can be a challenge during the autumn um, for some of us because, again, comfort foods seem to be everywhere. And foods start to move from perhaps salads and lighter meals to more nutritionally dense items as deep down we still all have this these caveman beliefs in us, which is basically saying that we've got to add fat to our bodies um, for the harsh winters that are about to come in the cave. And as ever, of course, I would encourage mindful eating. So instead of focusing on strict diets or restrictive eating patterns, practicing self-compassion and approaching weight loss if you're working on it, um, releasing weight with a gentler mindset. And it's also, again, a reminder that it is absolutely fine to have these little treats or indulgences, whatever you want to call them, as long as you're doing so without guilt, whilst also still prioritising your well-being goals, having nutritious meals and loving movement, whatever it might be. Again, perhaps knowing your mood is on the slide and maybe it's time to up the thought work, you know, reach out and have some coaching, have try a healing modality like belief coding to help you through these darker months and so again it's worth building self-development and healing time into your daily weekly or monthly routine depending on what kind of modality you choose to use um, this autumn could be filled with creative comforting routines that prioritize your physical health your emotional wellness and of course speak to your soul because you know at the end of the day you deserve absolutely nothing less than that 
So some closing words as I wrap up this episode. Remember that autumn is not just a season. It is a unique opportunity to embrace your well-being with love and joy, just like every season, really. But I say the changing season is an opportunity to reflect. It's a time to build your own method of holistic well-being that suits your life in this season. And of course, be sure to take that deep dive into your beliefs, looking at your beliefs, your thoughts, your feelings, your actions and results. And if you don't know how to do that, all you need to do is drop me a hashtag get me started on any of my socials. And if you've enjoyed this episode, of course, don't forget to subscribe and share it with a friend who may need a dose of positivity this season. And again, of course, stay well and stay tuned for future episodes of the show. And of course, the membership the wellness for women membership is there if you need any additional support but until next week i'm going to say bye for now and i hope you have a lovely week and i'll see you next time bye for now thanks for listening and don't forget if you want to boost your life and weight loss the triple a way check out the relevant links for today's show in the description speak soon <laughs>